Hairbrushes are not toys. And let me tell you, if you use the wrong one or you use them incorrectly, you will ruin your hair. If there is one thing that I have learned in almost 30 years of being a professional hairstylist, it's that most people have no idea which brushes to use or how to use them appropriately. So in this video, first of all, I'm gonna explain exactly what brushes you should be using, what you shouldn't be using, and more importantly, how to use them correctly. Two, I'm gonna save you a couple hundred dollars at least in the process. And three, I'm gonna reveal my absolute favorite brush that you have never heard of before. With that said, let's talk about some brushes. Have you ever left the salon and been like, man, my hair looks amazing. And then you get home and you cannot reproduce what they did in the salon. And what people will tell you, it's the product they use, you have to buy that product. If you use that product and if you don't use that product, you'll never get the same results. That's true, partly. But there is a major part of that that is not being talked about, which is they're using the correct brush and they're using it the correct way. That is just as, almost if not more important than the products that they're using. So don't allow someone to sell you on the idea that you just need to buy a different product. You may be able to get the end result that you're looking for simply by using the correct brush that you might already have. Okay, so the first brush we're gonna talk about, or comb, is a rat tail comb. This is a rat tail comb. And in reality, these are kind of probably more used in the salon, they're used for highlights, but really where they shine is this right here. This is the rat tail side. And if you want a very strong part that looks totally perfect, no hair out of place, this is what you're gonna to use to get it. All you're gonna do is use this side to comb your hair back, and then you're gonna use the rat tail to actually draw that part in, and then just simply part your hair. But if you're gonna use this as a comb, I wouldn't even bother unless you need that straight part. Now, if you need an actual comb for anything, you want a real comb, which is like this, which you're gonna see your stylist using to cut your hair. Now, the great thing about these is when you're flat ironing your hair, you need to make sure that the hair that's about to go into the flat iron is straight and smooth. Knowing that, using this as kind of a guide for that hair to smooth it out, strain it out, get it all prepped to go through that flat iron, gonna go a long way to making your process far more efficient, which means less time that your hair has to be under heat because you're going over less passes on each section therefore potentially less damage. Now, if this is confusing for you to use, it's kind of awkward, I understand that it can be, there is a flat iron that you can actually get that has this built in. The one I've used is the L'Oreal Steam Pod. It's a pretty good iron, if I'm honest, but I wouldn't want you to spend the money on that iron just for that one particular aspect of it. Okay, now to stay on the comb idea, let's talk about wide tooth combs. Now, these are great for detangling hair, especially if you have wavy or curly hair. You're gonna want a wider tooth, much wider than something like this, so that you make sure that you can keep those curls intact and not actually just add more frizz in the process. You might have heard that you're not supposed to ever comb your tangles out with a wide tooth comb. Some stylists will tell you that, maybe if I'm completely honest, I just don't agree with it. They're right in the fact that these can be damaging and the reason they can be damaging is because all of these individual teeth are just so rigid. So the problem with that is that when you actually get snagged on a tangle, it's easy for them to just kind of rip through that tangle and ultimately break it, which is just damaging your hair. But that really stems from just not applying a comb or any brush in the correct manner. If you wanna use it correctly, you need to start detangling from the bottom up. Then you're not gonna run into those tangles and cause that potential breakage. Because the fact of the matter is, any brush that you use, if you use it incorrectly and start from the top moving down, has the ability to get snagged on those tangles and therefore break your hair. But if your hair is straight, I think there's even a better detangling brush that I think you should look into, and that is this. this is the wet brush. But this is one of my hands down favorite detangling brushes, period. If you have wavier curly hair, there's a better one we'll talk about in a minute, but if your hair is straighter or you plan on straightening your hair, this is going to be one of your best friends. If you see this, all of these bristles have a lot of play in them. And that means that they're just easier on your hair. They're not as rigid, so they're really nice for detangling hair. These are absolute kings. They're only $10, they're incredible. Now, I did say if you had wavy hair or curly hair, there might be one that you like even more. This is the Demon brush. Side note, my wife ordered this on Amazon specifically for this video. She's fired. <laughs> this is the worst Denman brush. I would never use this in the salon and I would never tell you to buy it. I don't even know what it's called. Oh, wait a minute, no. Enjoy Holiday 1981. I think that might be the brand. Do not, just stay away and I'll show you why. So this brush, if you look closely at it, you'll see that all of these teeth are kind of 
messed up and misaligned and it's just poorly put together. This one also has a bend in the handle. I don't know if that is by accident or if that's on purpose, but I really dislike that when you're holding it. It just feels really odd. So you want that to be more straight. It's gonna be a lot more comfortable for you. I don't know what magic this thing does because these teeth are very close together, which would lead me to believe that it would be terrible on curly or wavy hair. However, a lot of people with curly and wavy hair will tell you that this, for some reason, still maintains the curl pattern and still maintains the clumps and detangles your hair. It is something that might be worth checking out. There's one more that we need to talk about and I'm about to save you a minimum of $200. I want you to imagine that you went to a Michelin star restaurant. Right, this thing is the best restaurant you've ever heard. And it's got an incredible chef, obviously, and you spent thousands of dollars on a meal. But your meal was simply a hot dog. Hot dog? It's like, great chef, but how do you screw up a hot dog? And how much better can a hot dog be? It's just a hot dog. Hot dog! That's the next brush. So this is the Mason Pierce. $240 a brush. Okay. Let me just be frank with you. This is built really well. Okay, this is a tank. This thing's going to last forever. And it works. Like, it's not that it doesn't work, but it doesn't $240 work. These two things do a lot of the same thing. And this is $10. If you told me this was $20, i would be like, oh, you know what? This is a good option. You should look into this. And I would still tell you, this is probably better. <laughs> is it a terrible thing to go purchase or is it a horrible thing if you have it? No, it's not hurting your hair doing anything like that. It's not bad. It's just extremely overpriced and I wouldn't recommend that you waste your money on it. Now, there's one other thing that I want to talk about with this brush because it's likely something else that you've heard about these brushes. There's no such thing as the whole Marsha Brady game. Now, if you're unfamiliar with that, that is the idea that you brush your hair a hundred times a night and all of a sudden your hair is nice and healthy and shiny. And the thought behind this is because it helps distribute the oils from your scalp down through your hair. Let me tell you what happens. You don't need to do that because your hair is going to have those oils distributed on a multitude of different ways throughout the day, i.e. that every time you run your hands through your hair, you're distributing oils. Naturally, your scalp is already secreting oil, so it's going to head south. Gravity. Trying to get your hair to have more oil is simply going to make it dirtier, faster, weigh it down faster, force you to shampoo your hair more often because it feels dirty, and therefore you're actually being harder on your hair because shampooing your hair every day isn't necessarily a good thing either. Let's talk about the board bristle brush. Uh, these, I'm not a huge fan of either. Let me tell you what they're for, and then we'll kind of talk about why I think there's just a better option. These do have a tendency to slide through the hair really well, and they can help to smooth the hair out, and they usually have reasonable tension. But if you look at this, you're going to find that nine out of 10 times, 10 out of 10 times, these are wooden. The wood does not heat up the same as say ceramic or metal does. That's where we get into why I think there's a better option. This is a round brush. At the end of the day, most people are going to use it are going to use it for the same reasons that you would use a round brush. Smooth your hair out, add some bend at the ends, which gives it a little bit of volume and shape. This is also a round brush. This is my favorite round brush, hands down, period. It's ceramic. It's got just as good of tension as this does, meaning that when you grab the hair, there's enough tension in that to actually help to smooth your hair out and straighten it out because you need tension to actually get your hair smooth and straight. And this is all ceramic. The ceramic means that it's going to heat up, but more importantly, the ceramic also means that it's going to heat up evenly because ceramic conducts heat very well and efficiently, and therefore it's going to be the same amount of heat all the way across this entire ceramic barrel. Also, there's perforations in here, which are allowing some of that hot air from the blow dryer to make a way through that are also helping to heat your hair from kind of all sides. Now, all of these things are going to help A, smooth your hair out, and B, it's going to make sure that it's efficient in its actual smoothing of your hair. It means that this is supposed to cause less damage. However, this is going to take your hair longer to get the desired result. That longer period of time means that your hair is under heat for a longer period of time. I personally don't feel that that means that it's less damage. This is going to do it more efficiently, which means that it's less time that your hair is under heat and give you as good, if not a better overall result. If I'm grabbing for a round brush, I'm grabbing for this every single time. Before we get into the very ending here, I'm gonna share my absolute favorite brush, the one you've never heard of before. It's incredible. But I wanna talk to you curly hair folks for just a second and share what's not a brush. However, it's probably the most important thing I think you would use in your styling process. The diffuser. This thing is an absolute must if you've got curly hair and you're drying it curly. Now, all this is going to do is go on the end of your dryer and it's going to diffuse the airflow so that it's not such a strong airflow coming out of the dryer. 
This is going to help not only enhance curl, but it's gonna help minimize the amount of frizz and texture that you're getting in your end result. What about scrunching your hair with your hands? Yes, that can enhance curl, but it will also enhance frizz at the same time. I wanna talk about my favorite brush that you've never heard of. This, my friends, is the Volumizer. This has been a best seller in our salon. Our clients flip out for these things for a multitude of different reasons, but these things are incredible. And every stylist in our salon has this in their station and every stylist in our salon uses this on every client. So this helps to create a little bit more volume in your hair. Now, if you've got medium length hair, this works on longer hair too, but especially if you've got medium, collarbone or shorter, and you're trying to create any sort of volume, this is gonna help get that hair up off of your scalp and help you create more lift or root lift, which is part of a foundation of volume. It's partly because one, these little balls on the ends of these bristles right here, they feel really good against the scalp so they're not like grabbing your hair, but they also help to kind of pick that hair up. And then if you notice this holes, these ridges right here, that allows all of that air to go through. So this isn't blocking the air that's coming through, which would minimize the speed at which your hair is drying. Whereas something like this, a larger paddle brush would do that on shorter hair because you can see that this is a huge plate that could be getting in the way of the actual airflow, which is really needed to kind of keep your hair drying and keep it more efficient. If you've got longer hair, these do work still as well. But if I'm completely honest, you don't really need this. You're gonna tilt your head over upside down and that simple gravity is going to help you create some root lift to begin with. This is a game changer of a brush. Okay, now I hope that that helped you kind of get a better grasp on what brush you should use, which ones you really need from a stylist perspective, which ones you don't need and how you should use things effectively because it really does make a difference. But if you have any questions, you know where I'm at. And as always, keep it in the comment section. Go down, join the community, hang out with us, share what brush is your favorite brush because we all kind of learn from each other. And uh, I learn from all of you guys. Hey, look, I use a lot of brushes, but I can't use every single one of them. There's so many out there. So fill me in. Tell me what I don't know. I'll see you next Tuesday. I hate saying that. I'll see you next next week. There you go. In the next video. See you in the next video. Video is better. Video is better. See you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.